Number 58. A truck with 32-inch diameter wheels is traveling at 60 miles per hour. Find the angular speed in radians per minute, and how many revolutions per minute do the wheels make? So I think this might make sense to answer the second question first, revolutions per minute. So first, let's consider the tire. A tire is circular, and they told us the diameter of the tire. It is 32 inches. But by knowing the diameter, we also know the radius, right? That's just half the diameter. So in other words, that would be 16 inches. Now, if we know the radius of a circle, we also then know the circumference of the circle or the length of this part that I'm tracing. Okay, we know then we're able to calculate the length. Now then what is the length? Well, there's a formula that says the circumference of a circle is equal to two pi r. Now you could have also used the equation pi d times the diameter. It doesn't really matter. Okay, either formula will work. Um, I, maybe it'll be easier to actually use the diameter one, but you could have used the radius one. It doesn't really matter because two times the radius is the diameter, right? So let's now plug in our value for the diameter. So it's pi times then 32 inches. So in other words, the circumference here is simply 32 pi inches. Now remember pi is a, you know, it's, it's a number. It's 3.14. 159, blah, blah, blah. So if you took 32 and multiplied it by pi, you'd realize that the circumference then of this tire is about 100.5 inches. Okay? That's the circumference of the tire. That's the length of this red part that I traced. Now, if you consider that the car is now traveling at 60 miles per hour, all right, we have to figure out actually how many inches per hour this is to try to figure out how many revolutions it might make. So we have to do a couple of conversions here. All right, so uh, basically there's a couple of known facts that you need here uh, that one mile is equivalent to 5,280 feet. We also need to know that uh, there are 12 or one foot is equivalent to 12 inches. Armed with those two pieces of information, we can now start to convert some stuff, all right? So I'm going to do some dimensional analysis here. If you need help with dimensional analysis, I will leave a link in the description below to a video on dimensional analysis that I think walks you through the, the process. I'll leave you a couple links. We have done a couple of videos there. So this is gonna be 60 miles per hour. And per how many hours? Well, per single hour, so you can put a one down there. Now, since I want miles to cancel, my unit of miles is going to go in the denominator. Or in other words, I'm going to take now my conversion value, right? We've done this in the past, where we've taken this value now and just plug it in down there. The miles go on the bottom because I need the miles to cancel, right? And then I'm going to put the corresponding value of feet up there in the numerator. But I don't, you know, if I solve this right now, I would know feet per hour. But I don't want to know feet per hour. I want to know inches per hour maybe first okay so then what i gotta do is do another conversion i'm gonna put my feet down there now i know this is foot but that's because it's singular foot and feet basically the same thing so that would cancel with the feet there but then i have to put its corresponding value 12 inches on the top now what this tells me is this when i calculate this this would tell me the number of inches per hour okay however though i'm not interested in inches per hour i'm interested in inches per maybe minute because i have to somehow relate the two together so they want me to calculate revolutions per minute, and therefore I'm going to find inches per minute in order to help me do that. So now what we need to know is we need to know the relation between hours and minutes, right? You know that in one hour, there is going to be 60 minutes. So what I do now is careful. I realize my hour unit is in the denominator now, so I must cancel the hours and they must go in the numerator. So I'm gonna take that given value, that known relationship, put the hour there, and then its corresponding value of the minute down at the bottom. Now when that happens, look, the hours cancel and the units you are left with then will be inches per minute. And that's what I'd like to calculate here, right? So why don't we now throw this on into the calculator and see what we can do. So this becomes now 60 times 5,280 times 12 divided then by 60. So this works out to be about 63,000 360 
inches every single minute. Okay, that's how many inches the car is traveling per minute. Now, well, wait a minute. If that's the amount of inches the car is traveling every single minute, and you know that the length of this tire is 100 inches, then how many revolutions must the tire make in order to cover 63,360 inches in one minute? Well, it turns out we can do a division, right? We can do a division. So basically, what we can, what we know now is we're doing another conversion, right? Watch, we're going to take the 63,360 inches per minute. And I realize that this value of inch, this hundred or this value of inches down there at the bottom, 100.5, this really represents or is equivalent to 100.5 inches every single revolution. In other words, every single revolution of the tire, it travels 100.5 inches. And therefore now when I do my conversion, I need inches to go on the bottom because I want them to cancel. I want revolution. Remember, the whole goal here is revolutions per minute. So I want my, let me just delete that uh, right there. So I want my inches to go on the bottom so that the units cancel. And then I want the revolutions to go on the top. Now notice what happens here is the inches just go bye-bye. And now I'm left with revolutions per minute. So when I do this calculation now, it's a division, but that should make sense, right? I mean, if the car is traveling 63,000 about inches, every single minute, but the tire itself has a circumference of 100.5, wouldn't you divide 100.5 into this to find out how many times the tire went around? Right, hopefully that makes a little bit of intuitive sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide by 100.5, but rather I'm gonna use the exact value of 32 pi. So when I plug it in, it's gonna be 32 times pi in the denominator. <clears throat> Just in case the number you get is slightly, slightly off from what I'm writing, that would be why. So this is about 630 now revolutions per minute. So this is indeed now the revolutions per minute. Okay, this answers, and I'm gonna highlight it in a different color. This answers the second question, okay? Now I think this was easier to deal with uh, first, and now what we're gonna do is now I'm gonna take this part and find the angular speed it's asking, right? In radians per minute, so let me now highlight that in red. So now since we know revolutions per minute, we can actually now easily you know, make this final conversion. So consider that how many radians are there in an entire revolution? An entire 360, ooh, 360 degrees, right? How many radians are there? You know there are two pi radians, right? You remember this from doing your unit circle, right? This is three halves pi, and then this is two pi back at the beginning. So if you took, if you took this line, right? We've done this in the past and it rotates well, it's a terrible line. But if you took this and rotated it around one full revolution, it would have traveled two pi radians. So in other words, you can create a little known equality here that one revolution is equivalent to two pi radians. And now I can finally finish my calculation. So watch, I'm gonna take that 630 now. 630 revolutions per minute. And now what I'm gonna do is take my revolutions that I have over here, throw it in the denominator because I want them to cancel. Then I'm gonna take my two pi radians, throw them on into the top, okay? So now when I do this calculation, I'm gonna get the number. Let's do it. So exact value, I'm gonna take the 630.253 from before, multiply that by then two pi. And I get about now, look at that exactly now, uh, 3,900 and 60. Okay, if you use all the exact answers, uh, you will get exactly that number uh, out of the calculator. So this is radians now per minute. All right, so now, whoa, don't worry, I'm okay. Don't you get that way at the end of the part? I'm just like, oh my God, can't wait to finish this. Anyway, uh, that's the radians per minute. All right, um, yeah. Hopefully that makes sense. There's a ton of conversions here. I'm gonna leave it that, like I said, link in the description below for you to learn a little more in depth about dimensional analysis, but this would be the best way to go about it. Um, yeah, so thanks for tuning in. All right, I do hope this helps. Uh, if you can, give us a hand, subscribe, like, appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.